that if we eliminate the old portions of the Old Testament, uh -huh. we eliminate the whole word. Number one. Number two, we can't keep teaching obedience to tithing without obedience to the rest. We, we, we're focusing on tithing. Be, if you be obedient to tithing, then God is going to bless you. Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible says, he says, here today I lie before you the blessing and the curse. The blessing, if you obey me, everything that I've told you, the curse if you don't. Mm -hmm. And the, the problem is, is that many believers right now today are walking under the curse because we have sickness, we got people dying, and we have more turmoil within the body of Christ today than we could ever imagine. We have evil that's come against us because we've not been obedient to the word. Uh, so from that, uh, we, we have eliminated those tenets. So I've asked a lot of people to do this. Go to the end of Malachi and to the beginning of Matthew, and I want you to do this. Tear that blank page out. <laughs> Tear it out. Because the Old Testament, the New Testament is a revealing of the Old Testament. And if we eliminate it and don't begin to do what God intended for us to do, not just for the Jews, mm. for believers, for us to do what he commanded us to do. And the second thing, the Bible says this, we know that we know God if we keep his commandments. That's right. For he who says that he lo loves God but does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Uh, and the third thing, the Messiah said, if, my word, if, I, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, then you ask what you will and it shall be given. In uh, 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 1 John uh, 3, 21 and 22, says, if your heart did not condemn you, 23, 22 says, you can ask me for whatever you want to, and I will give it to you if you obey my commandments. Mm -hmm. So our problem is, is that we're not being taught the commandments of God. And to be honest with you, Ben, and I'm going to be literal, God spoke to me about two weeks ago. He said, Reggie, we, you, we, you, have too many, you have too many motivational speakers in the pulpit. We need teachers of the word. Mm. And right now... I have to applaud that, man, we do need teachers of the word of God. But, but, but our whole problem boils down to this. And this is one thing that God has really dealt with me with. We have eliminated the Hebrew. And in eliminating the Hebrew, the Hebrew language has caused us to lose revelation of the word. And the reason it's caused us to lose revelation of the word because when you have men translating the word of God, I'll give you a great example. When they translated Satan, in the Hebrew it's Hasatan, the Satan. Mm -hmm. When they translated it, they couldn't come up with any words or definitions for it. So they went into their mythology and got devils and demons and possessions and casting out. But then when you go and you talk to Hebrews or Orthodox, they don't believe in possession. They've never been taught. The only possession that they were given is when they would obey God and they could possess the land. There was nothing that could possess them. Uh, but the thing is, is that it, it should have always been this. We blame the devil for stuff that he don't do. The Bible says that we're led into sin by our own lust, our own evil inclination. Mm -hmm. So really, Hasatan should have, been, should have been translated as an evil inclination. Uh, that, now, anyway, now, Reggie, now, you're not telling me that you don't believe there's a real devil. I believe there is a Satan. Yeah, a real devil. He's not a devil. He's an evil inclination. But he's a spirit. He's a spirit, yes. Fallen from hell. Yes. Okay, but, I just want to make sure we, we got this thing straight here, man. You know, there is a real Satan. But, right, there is a real Satan. Okay. Satan, a Hasatan, there he is. But he was never called a devil. He was always called the Satan within okay. the Hebrew culture. Adversary. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, a, a lot of situations, because of the translation, we've lost the true identity of the word. Uh, so what I've decided to do is that I, I am so hungry to know God. I'm, me and my wife and my kids and my friends, we're going to school to learn Hebrew. Because within every Hebrew letter, there's a definition. From every, every Hebrew letter, there's a definition to the letter. The second letter in the Hebrew is a, is a letter called Beth. Or Beth. Mm -hmm. uh, when we say Bethlehem, Beth means house. Uh, so when we say Bethlehem, we're actually using the second letter in the Hebrew language uh, and then the definition of a word, the house of bread. Uh, so when we lose the Hebrew aspect, we lose the true revelation of what God is really trying to say to us. So you are advocating a return to the original, the original roots of Christianity? Yes. All right, now, are, are you saying we should all become Hebrews? That he... Well, but the thing, I, I think that if we want to really get a revelation of God's word, we need to understand the Hebrew language. And in that, I, I'll give you another great example. Most people being don't know why the Messiah died. We really don't know why the Messiah died. Now, it's true that he shed his blood for us, but that wasn't the reason that he died. The Bible tells us why he died. If you remember, 
Uh, another thing that most people don't know is what the new covenant is. You know, the Bible says this in Jeremiah 31, uh, 30, 31 through 33, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, which is uh, been repeated in Hebrews 8, 8 through 10 and Hebrews 10, 16. He says this, I make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. He didn't say the church. The house of Israel and the house of Judah. He said, uh, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers, though I was a husband to them. And that's the most important part of that passage. That I was a husband to them. He said, I make a new covenant with the house of Israel. And this is the covenant. I will write my Torah or we translate it law, on their hearts. I would take the old and put it on their hearts. And, I would, and, and they would no more need a teacher because I will become their teacher and I will forgive them of their wickedness and their crookedness. The question boils down to this. Why did God have to make a new covenant with the house of Israel? Because the house of Israel represented the ten northern nations. Okay, uh, The house of Judah, of course, the southern nation. Uh, so why did God have to make a covenant with them? The reason he had to make a new covenant to the house of Israel is because he divorced her. And the Bible says that when, uh, uh, in Jeremiah 3a, I believe, what Jeremiah is repeating in uh, Deuteronomy 24, that if a man finds any uncleanness in his wife, clean, cleanness in his wife, he finds she cheated on him. He's a, he can give her a writ of divorce, put it in her hands and send her away. Mm -hmm. If she go and marries another man, he decides he dislikes her, he can give her a writ of divorce, or if he dies, she can't marry the first husband. Ever again. All right. She can go and marry everybody else, but the first husband she can never marry again. So, why did he have to make a new covenant with us? The reason he had to make a new covenant was so that he could remarry Israel. So that he could become a new man replacing the old man. He can't marry her in the state that he was in before because he divorced her. But this is a new covenant in my blood. Yes, within every covenant there's always a blood sacrifice. Right. And there's always a meal offering and a drink offering. So the new covenant is a new wedding. So we had a wedding in Mount Sinai. Most people don't realize that. The reason I, could, I proved that there was a wedding that was going to Mount Sinai, I could prove it this way. Number one, the Bible said there was a thick cloud over the mountain. The, the word cloud in the Hebrew, if anybody's ever been to a Jewish wedding, you know that all Jews get married under a hoopah. Okay, it's a tent. The Hebrew root word for cloud is hoopah. Hmm, interesting. So God put a hoop over the mountain, and he was marrying Israel. <laughs> okay, so what happened is that Israel went against the covenant. They disobeyed it. Mm -hmm. So he divorces her. He has to make a new covenant with her. So he dies, so he become a new man replacing the old man. But there's something to this. She has to die too. So she can become a new woman replacing the old woman. The first wedding, Mount Sinai. The second wedding, Mount Zion in the book of Revelation. So we have another wedding that's coming on because this bride has to be repaired so she can become a new woman so she can marry this new man. So now, now how do you respond to people who say, well, the church is the bride of Christ? Well, if you look at the book, book of Revelation, you see that Israel is the bride of Christ. Jew, right. Come down as the bride of God. So, right, so we, we are, as Paul said, we're grafted into Israel, not the church. And if you go back to to, uh, the, I think the 29th chapter, I might be mistaken, the 28th or 29th chapter, uh, God says this to either Isaac or Jacob. He said, I'm going to make your people a multitude of people. The word multitude in the Hebrew is a Hebrew word called kahal, K-A-H-A-L. It means an assembly. It's where we get the word church from. So he says, I'm going to create a kahal, a church, an assembly out of your people. And the Bible says that in the last days, he's going to return the hearts of the children back to the fathers, and the hearts of the fathers back to the children. The fathers that he's talking about is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's going to turn the hearts of the children back to them and their hearts towards us. So we're going to be going through 12 gates, which represents the son of Israel. And there are not going to be any Gentile nations that's going in there. It's going to be grafted in nations, and the nation of the descendants of the sons of Israel. So who are you saying the church is it? The church is Israel. Well, who are, the, who are these people? They're Israel. Israel. The, because Paul said we're grafted in. So we're the new Israel. Yes. In his blood. Yes. So the church then is? Is the Kahal. Is Israel. It's the sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's an interesting perspective on it. That's the Bible. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I'm sure that there were theologians who, who would disagree with me. Absolutely, yeah. But the thing is, is that many of them would disagree with me because many of them have begun to uh, teach scripture without the aspect of the Hebrew uh, culture and its customs. We separated ourselves from the Hebrew uh, uh, aspect of scripture. And that was the language that our God spoke in. So if it was the language that he spoke in, it's the language we need to go back and study so we can get a true revelation of who he is. Well, there are those who say that he actually spoke Aramaic, which is a... It's a form of Hebrew, mm -hmm. but of course, he says that he's the God of the Hebrews. So if he's the God of Hebrew, he had to speak Hebrew. Man, you better watch out, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then, let me you start a new denomination. No, I'm, 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 I'm not looking to start a new nothing. I, I believe if you if you hear what I said today, everything that I said is biblical. And that's one of the things that God dealt with me about two years ago. I was flying on the plane and getting ready to speak, and I, God kept giving me all these scriptures, and, and I was like, Lord, now you know if I, I start reading all these scriptures, people are going to get bored. <laughs> and God spoke to me and said, you read all, all of them. He said, I'm going to show you what you guys have been trained to do. You've been trained to take my word, uh, take a text, give a title to that text, close my word up and begin to preach your own experiences and opinions. Mm. He said, you preach my word. And no more, Ben, will I ever go outside the Word of God, and I'll never sit down and argue with anybody who's going to give me an opinion outside His Word. So that's what I try to make sure now, that if I say anything, it better be backed up with the Word of God. Sounds like a plan to me. It's a good plan. <laughs> and, and you know what? It's not, I'm not starting another denomination. I'm not look, interested in doing that. I'm interested and getting back to the original so that people's lives can be truly delivered so they can understand and and i'll say this if if, if you remember when god gave moses the commandments mm -hmm. we think that he only gave moses the commandments the bible says that all the israelites heard his voice as he was given the commandments the bible says they came to moses and they said moses look no one has ever heard the voice of god and lived we're the only ones that's ever done that so this is what we suggest. You go up, you get the commandments, come back down and tell us what to do and we'll do it. And the problem, God said it was a good thing that they chose to do. But it's like a father saying, you know what, son, you know, I'm going to go ahead and let you do that. I believe God wants to speak to everybody. Mm. The problem is we've chosen to be such a, so afraid of the Word of God that people won't even go in the Word of God and study for themselves. They would rather go to church on Sunday, have the minister to say something to them without no notepad or nothing, and go back home and they say, I'm satisfied. That's what Paul said. He talked about the fact that the Bereans were more yes. noble than the Thessalonica. They heard the Word of God with all readiness, but they went back and searched the Word to see what these things were.